Welcome back to Cottage Chargers Quilting again. My name is Alay Dupuy. Behind the camera is Delilah. We are going to touch on another Sue Sherman quilt for you, Giraffe Duos. Um, so here she is right behind me right here. Again, this was in uh, Turtle Encounters and Batch Balloona. And again, just a little background on Sue in case you didn't watch our last video. We met her in Toronto quite a few years back at the Toronto National Quilt Show up here in Canada, um, where she won an award for one of her quilts called Huddle. Um, she's also a winner of the IQA Award in Houston and the Padoka AQS, and she's been featured in quite a few uh, quilting magazines. Sue is the designer and creator of this amazing giraffe duo art quilt. She will gracefully guide you firsthand through all of the steps. She includes her hands down easiest applique method that she's called Jigsaw Puzzle uh, to complete this quilt top. Then she's going to thankfully take us through the details of how to do the hair and the fur, which is an award winning technique that Sue has created. I absolutely love it. It's kind of like thread painting and she'll go into great details and share her secrets. All of Sue Sherman's kits and patterns are available on our website at cottagetreasures.store. Um, Turtle Encounters, Giraffe Duo, Bashful Huna to name a few. So go on and check those out. And without further ado, we're going to give it away to Sue Sherman and she's gonna teach you how to make this beautiful quilt giraffe duo. Hi, I'm Sue from Sue Sherman Quilts and I'm back today to talk to you about how to make the giraffe duo quilt. It can be made as in this version with both a male and a female giraffe on a single quilt or you can make a smaller quilt with only one giraffe. It's a little less work, male or female, your choice. Today I'm going to be working with this one. It's uh, using the fabrics from the kit. The giraffe duo is available either as a pattern or as a kit. If you get the pattern, you get this full color instruction book. You get the uh, pattern pieces drawn, which shows you how to cut out the pattern pieces, and a layout drawing, which shows you how to lay out the, uh, the pattern pieces to make the final quilt. If you get the kit, you get all those same things, and in addition, you get these fabrics. Uh, there's a, a piece of uh, ordinary black pre dyed cotton lawn. There's a piece of dark brown and light brown uh, giraffe colored fabrics which are uh, hand dyed by me here in my laundry room and you get the background the uh, background is individually hand painted with dyes that's a thickened dye and I manually put each one on with a paintbrush and so they each have a cloud pattern and they're each a little bit different The only other material that you'll need to make the project, uh, to make the quilt top, is a piece of uh, two-sided fusible webbing. And I recommend for this that you use a product called Atlas Stick. It has uh, not a lot of adhesive on it, so it's not very uh, gummy when you come to quilt it. And really this is all about the quilting. You'll notice in the giraffe, um, the way I quilt it involves a lot of heavy quilting through um, two layers of applique in addition to the, uh, the, the uh, background fabric and the batting and the backing. So that's uh, quite a lot of adhesive that, of, of the product that you have that you're heavily quilting through. And in order for that not to be a pain, uh, it's really best to use um, a fusible product that doesn't have a lot of um, of adhesive on it. But in addition to not having a lot of adhesive, it still needs to be repositionable because there are quite a lot of small pieces and you're going to want to position them, get them all in the right spot without them moving away from you. So they need to uh, be able to stick down prior to the point that you come to put them, to iron them down and, and have them in their final position. The product that works, that I found that works the best for this is called Atlas Stick. So uh, you, it comes in a roll that's uh, 20 inches wide. You can buy it generally by the inch uh, if you go to your quilt store. And um, the, uh, the piece that you need is 38 inches long to do the two giraffes. You use the smaller piece for, the one, for just doing one giraffe. And if you do that, um, you're going to need to probably cut the uh, pattern pieces 
piece in order to uh, to figure out the positioning. I've set it up nicely so that the uh, 38 inch piece that you buy exactly fits on top of the pattern pieces uh, drawing that comes with the quilt. Or sorry, the, the pattern pieces drawing that comes with, with the pattern. Um, I am going to draw on it with a, uh, a marker. It's just an ordinary fine black marker. And I'm going to draw all of the lines. So uh, the, the drawing, uh, the main cutting lines, I'm going to draw their solid lines on the pattern pieces and I'm going to draw them as solid lines. There are also dashed lines and these dashed lines are rough cut lines so you maybe don't need to draw them quite as accurately. And there were also some uh, dot dash lines. Those are placement lines. And uh, I think that the best plan is to copy them exactly the way they are on the pattern. So if it's a, dosh, a dot dash line, copy it as a dosh, dot dash line. And if it's a solid line, copy it as a solid line. And the solid lines in particular, it's best to try to get them as close as you can to the original pattern. Um, I think that you will have the most success if you do that. Uh, the one thing that you won't need to copy is the numbers. Uh, the method that I use, the uh, jigsaw puzzle method of assembling this applique, um, does not require numbers and, and I think you'll find that it's a little bit easier than some of the other methods that do. Uh, those mes methods might be good for more regular patterns, but I find that for these really irregular patterns with lots of tiny pieces, uh, I anyway prefer to do my jigsaw puzzle method and it doesn't require you to copy the numbers. Now that I've finished tracing all the pattern markings onto my two-sided fusible webbing, I'm going to go ahead and cut everything out and that's going to be on the dashed lines. So I'm rough, rough cutting all of the pieces. Oh, but before I do that, I need to mention, because I'm doing two giraffes, one of the things that can happen later is I can get confused as to which pieces go with which giraffe. So I've copied onto my uh, onto my apple stick a little M or a little F to say if it's male or female. I've rough cut all my pieces and I have them sitting on my table in three piles. I have one pile for the light brown, one for the dark brown, and one for the black fabric. So starting with the dark brown fabric, I've ironed my fabric and I lay it down on the table and I'm going to use it for the nose ridges for the two giraffes and for the, the main body spots pieces of the two giraffes. I don't need to worry about straight of green. Um, this is a raw applique project and, and there's no, uh, no green considerations and there's no real um, design in the, uh, in the fabric so uh, there they can go however they fit. So similarly for the light brown fabric, I'm going to lay out the, uh, the main body pieces and the ear pieces. And for the black fabric, I'm going to lay out the, um, the ossicones for the male giraffe and all these little collected little pieces of black. Once I've laid my pieces out on the correct fabric, I'm going to take them over to my iron and iron them according to the manufacturer's directions. So uh, in this case it's going to be three seconds on the front and then I'll flip it and iron it three seconds on the back. Now my pieces are ironed on and I'm going to cut them out on the cutting lines. Now it's very important when I cut um, on the black ones I'm going to cut all the way around the ossicones. For these little collections of pieces I'm just going to go around the outside of, of the whole thing because I don't want these little pieces to, to get lost. Um, when it comes to the dark brown, I'm going to cut only around the very outside, those cutting lines, the cutting line that runs all the way around the outside. I don't wish to cut, at this point, I'm not going to cut the individual spots because if I did that, um, they, they would all get mixed up and lost and, and it would be difficult to find them again. So for now, just cutting around the very outside of all the pieces. After cutting all the pieces out, I put them in two piles. And these are different piles now from what I had before. This is all of the pieces for the female giraffe, and this is all the pieces for the male giraffe. Uh, because I'm going to be doing both of them, I want to make sure I don't mix them up. 
So I'm going to take all the pieces for the female giraffe, put them over here. So now what I've got is the, uh, the body, upper and lower. I've got the ear. I've got the ossicones. I've got all these little individual black bits. And I've got the nose ridge. Now I've got all the pieces for the male giraffe together. And what I'm going to do is start um, cutting out the brown spots and putting them onto the, uh, the background of the male giraffe's body. So, first thing to notice is that these two pieces lay over each other fairly well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and cut, I'm going to start with this spot. I'm going to use a sharp and smallish pair of scissors. Uh, a medium sized pair is the best, but um, I would say it's more important that they be sharp. And the size is probably less important. So I'm going to go around and cut this piece. And if you're not inclined to, uh, to follow the lines exactly, then I would strongly recommend that at the very least you cut fairly smoothly. Uh, we don't want any, any jerky or pointy lines here. So I've cut this piece out and now when I put this, uh, when I overlay the, the spots piece onto the background piece, you'll see that there's uh, an opening here and it's just the right size for this piece I've just cut out. So that tells, that's like the, the last piece of a jigsaw puzzle. It's, it's telling me exactly where it goes. And so now I'm going to peel the backing off this piece, making sure that the, uh, the product, the, the uh, apple stick, remains with the uh, fabric. And I'm going to stick it into place. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I finished all of the spots on this piece. It's a little bit tedious, I won't deny that, but um, I don't normally sit at my table in my studio while I'm doing this. I would normally um, take a cup of tea. I might put the work on a tray and take it down and watch TV. Uh, generally, it, you can do this when you're comfortable. It Once you get going, doesn't require a lot of thought. If you're doing a smaller piece, it's sometimes handy to use a uh, pair of tweezers. That one's not very good. There we are, and once again, put, overlay the piece, line up what I've already cut, and this piece goes exactly right there. I don't really have to think about it. Now I'm down to the last few very small pieces. And I'm continuing with them just the same as I did for the other ones. Cut them out and uh, these ones perhaps a bit more slowly. Definitely want to use the tweezers for the small pieces. up near the neck are really quite a pain to do but to me they're important uh, in the finished giraffe they give a strong sense of, uh, of, of the creases of the neck and, and I think they're important to the realistic look of the quilt so they do take a little bit more time and patience, but I think it's worth it. And I'm still, even at this point, doing one at a time. I cut it out, I put down the piece, I flip it over, 
and uh, and put it in the right spot. There we go. So the next thing I have to do is turn to the um, the nose piece. And there's a couple of things I need to do here. Uh, first of all, I need to cut out this one piece here that's, um, that's separate. And just like the spots that were on the main part of the giraffe, this is like an extra spot that's... Uh, next to the nose piece. And this one, it's going to cover up those two little spots. It's going to cover that up. And otherwise, it's going to just kind of line up with the rest of the giraffe. If you're really not confident doing this, um, you can use the, uh, the layout drawing to, uh, to get this right. And I'm going to stick that right in there where it goes. Oh, maybe a little in further. There we go. And now I'm going to finish cutting out this piece. There we go. And, um, oh, now I need to cut out the nostrils. And I'll just check that there's no rough edges on the front. And the last thing I'm going to do before I put it all together is just go around the edge and check that there's no bits that are that don't look like they're lined up. And just trim a few spots to make sure it looks looks all good. Oh, there's a spot where the white's sticking out a little bit. We can correct some of these things with the quilting, but it's sometimes easier to, to do it at this point. I'm starting with the layout drawing and it's lying flat on my table. I put the background fabric over top of it so that I can see the, uh, the layout drawing through my fabric. And now I'm going to put all my pieces on. The male giraffe is standing a little bit behind the female giraffe. So he's going to go down first. And I'm going to try, generally speaking, to put all the pieces down um, with the ones at the back to go first so that I don't have to reposition anything too much. Starting with the ear then, it's going to go right here. And the ossicones will go there. And you'll notice the ossicones is a single piece, but um, once it gets covered up with the piece that goes in front of it, uh, you'll, you'll lose that center and it'll look like separate pieces. Um, the next thing to go down is the, um, 
Well, I'm going to put this piece here. It's, this is the nostrils, and it goes in behind the nostrils, and it's going to go this way up, right about there. And for this, there's no getting around having the black fabric be behind the white fabric. So in order for it not to give us any shadow, I want to make sure that there's that, that the black fabric is behind all of the white fabric that's showing inside those nostrils. So the next thing is the, uh, the big piece. And I'm going to put it down here, line up all the other places. That should be about right. And now this other piece, the uh, nose ridge, is going to go on top of that. And it goes, it's, it's going to cover up those two pieces and this piece here. And, and you want to line it up there. If, if you're not comfortable doing this, um, just kind of winging it like I just did, uh, you, can, um, you can do it by carefully inspecting where the pieces are underneath. And I can see now that I've got a piece of, of black sticking out from behind here. I can reposition that piece of black or I can just cut the bit off, which is what I'm going to do. There we go. And now I'm going to place these uh, these little black bits. So originally we were making sure they stayed all together. Now it's time for them to be separated. So this one has a little bit of um, a placement line. So we know that that goes um, here. And the placement line is, is going to be where it goes underneath the other piece. So I have to lift up the uh, this little bit of the head and stick that underneath it. Now this one goes in the other ear, and uh, it goes kind of like that. And again, I I can look. Yeah, look, look at the uh, the pattern piece underneath to make sure it's right. For the eye, I, I'm going to need to be a lot more careful than I was for, for those bits. Um, the eye, these are tiny, tiny pieces, but as you well know, where, the, where an eye goes on an animal has a lot to do with how realistic it's going to look. I think that's about right. Yep. There's a bit of thread hanging off there. I gotta get that. There we go. And now this last eye, and this eye is is um, really just a sliver. It's got that lovely big giraffe eyelash. It's, it's sticking out a little bit past the edge of the face, um, and that's the way it's supposed to, with the eyelash sticking out further. So there's a completed male giraffe. Now I've assembled the pieces for the female giraffe, and I'm going to place them on the uh, background. And she's going to go just slightly in front of the male giraffe here, so that she'll overlap a little bit like that.
I've ironed all the pieces very firmly onto backing fabric according to the manufacturer's directions for the uh, fusible product. I now have a completed quilt top and it's ready to be quilted. So we finished the piecing together on top of the quilt so now we're going into finishing the quilt top. I'm going to be demonstrating the quilting today on my long arm sewing machine. Uh, this is the sit down long arm so it's used in the exact same way that you would use a domestic machine. Uh, the reason I use the long arm is because it's it's got a lot of space here around the needle so that we can get a good look at what's going on. I'm going to be using one color of thread for each of the colors of fabric that I have. Uh, I'm using a trilobal polyester thread because I like the sheen of it. Um, I have one color for every color of fabric, but in addition to that, I've got uh, white for the glint in their eyes, and I've got um, this grayish brownish color that's going to be used for the hollow of their ears. In my bobbin, I'm going to be using Mong Poly. It's an invisible thread. Um, the reason that I use it is because when I change uh, my top thread, I don't want to have to keep changing my bottom, my uh, bobbin all the time. So when I use the Monopoly invisible thread in my bobbin, I just keep using the same thread for the whole project. Um, it's um, a little bit trickier to use than regular thread, but the secret is that when you wind your bobbin, wind it very slowly and don't wind it full. Uh, go with a half or even less than half full. And you'll find that that way the, the thread isn't, isn't pulled out on the bobbin and that makes all the difference to the way it goes through the machine. Uh, I'm going to be using a non-stick needle. The non-stick needle allows uh, the needle to go through the fabric that, that is, uh, uh, that's combined with adhesive and uh, it's just like the adhesive, adhesive wasn't there. It, it's really uh, quite wonderful. I'm going to start on this spot in the middle of the male giraffe's neck. And I'm going to start with uh, by, by bringing my bottom thread up and uh, keep it out of the way. I don't need to do a lock stitch here because my uh, stitches are going to cover up uh, this beginning part of the, of the stitching line. What I'm going to do here is what I like to call pseudo thread painting. Uh, I'm not going to try to put every hair of the giraffe. It's not really necessary. I think as long as you get enough up and down and try to make it look natural, um, it gives the illusion of hair on the giraffe and I'm finding that that's quite effective. It is very, very forgiving. If you've never done any thread painting before, or even if you've never done any free motion quilting before, you might find that this is a good place to start. Once you, once you get the hang of, of how your machine works, uh, stitching through all this applique, you'll find that things like your stitch length really doesn't matter. Even if your stitch length is inconsistent, doesn't really matter for a natural looking applique uh, or thread painting like this. Um, and a uh, bonus, one of the things that I'm going to be asking you to do is to go outside the lines. So as I'm going to be um, stitching on top of this spot, I'm going to go a little bit below and a little bit above. Not every time, but some of the time. So it's going to be uh, a lot of variation in that. And at the end, uh, when we've done the stitching on, on the lighter brown that goes in between the dots, you'll see that it actually looks very natural. It looks very much like fur. So uh, let's get started. If you do have trouble with, um, with your thread shredding or breaking, one of the things that you will probably find is that it will improve quite a lot if you go more slowly. So you can do a bit of experimenting to find out with your machine uh, just how quickly you can go before you end up with problems. Going slower makes for a better project anyway, so it's not that bad. Uh, if you find you get bored, then, uh, then you can tell yourself you're really good at it and you know what you're doing. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to mention is when you get to the end, uh, I'm not going to be going 
back all the way to the end of the of the uh, spot and back every time I'm going to be doing shorter lengths but when I turn around especially in these ones when I'm when I have gone outside the line I'm going to do a couple of stitches inside the hole before I go back and that really helps uh, make sure that that bottom thread doesn't come up and show itself onto the right side. You don't want to see the bottom thread, especially if it's not the same as the top thread. So by before you turn around, before you go back the other way, do a, a, a couple of stitches in the hole and that will eliminate that problem. Now I have a certain density of stitching that I like to use that I find looks um, looks quite realistic. You can use more dense or less dense than I use. It's uh, completely up to you. But I would recommend that once you get started and you do it a certain way, uh, try to make sure that you do all the spots in the same way. There, that's one spot. And now I'm going to do a little bit of a lock stitch right where I'm at. And I'm just going to lift up my needle and go over to the next spot. And I'm just going to start sewing. Um, I don't need to do a lock stitch at the beginning, as we said before. I'm not going to cut the thread now. I'm going to cut them all later. That way I, I end up with a lot less uh, wasted thread. Now I've done this little section of the darker brown dots. Uh, I'm trying to do in fairly chunky sections. That's why I haven't gone off and done this little bit. I'll do that after I've done this dot. Um, now I'm going to switch to the lighter color of brown thread and I'm going to do the areas in between. But before I do that, I need to clip off all of these, uh, these connecting threads. Now, I'm not going to clip off my underneath threads because they're all invisible and, and almost impossible to find. 
But if you're using uh, the same color in your bobbin thread, um, and if you care about how the back of your quilt looks, uh, you should also go in and clip off the ones in the back as well. I'm using the, th the thread that matches the, uh, the lighter brown color, and I'm using exactly the same methodology. I'm just going back and forth. I'm imitating the hair. I'm going to go a little over the line, so I'm going to run into the dots on some of them, but not all of them. So now I've done the, uh, the area in between the spots of this chunk and now it's basically a question of continuing on doing what I've done here. I'm going to go down to the bottom of this giraffe and then I'm going to start coming up the neck. Now I've completed the thread painting up the neck and I've gone all the way up to here. And I'm going to come back and do these areas just next to the, the uh, this orange piece that's the head, or orangey brown. Um, what, I need to make sure that when I do these pieces that are right next to the head piece, that I don't go over. Uh, in these areas I've been uh, coloring outside the lines, so to speak, but I want to make sure that those lines don't include going up into the head because that wouldn't look realistic. So I'm going to go back and do these ones. So now as you can see I've done a nice chunk here, it's, it, there's still, uh, I, I don't want to end up with any areas where I've got a, an area that's not quilted, that's trapped inside an area that is quilted, because that's going to, you can see um, how, how, it's not a lot, but there is a little bit of, of scrunching of my fabric as a result of all this stitching. And, and we need to make sure that we control that. And it's easy enough to control if, if you just are very careful about, um, about the order in which you do the quilting. Now I'm back to my darker color and I'm going to start working along the nose ridge. And I'm going to use this uh, chalk pencil to give you an idea of how I'm going to do it. Now the nose ridge is um, the way you basically sell it is by making the, the hairs, by showing how the hairs grow and making it look natural. So I'm assuming that the hairs are going to go straight down the middle of the nose, but they're going to go um, kind of curved towards the outside like that. And I'm using this chalk, it, it'll rub off in no time, but it, it gives me a sense of, of direction that gives me an idea of how to do this. Uh, so I'm going to start again o over where my stitching already is. I'm not going to start in the middle of this piece because that would, would leave me with a, a spot here that's not uh, that's not quilted that'll get trapped in between the areas that are quilted. So 
I'm generally following I'm generally following the lines of the chalk that I just have. As I get towards the top, uh, I'm going to be using um, black thread up on the very top of, of this uh, bump in the middle. So what I'm going to do is kind of feather my, um, my brown stitching in here and then I'm going to fill that in with some feathering of the black stitching as I work my way up to the much blacker part of the top of here. But of course I have to work all that in um, in my general decision to make things go very chunky. So here I'm going to start in uh, towards the middle and work out, but I don't want to go, I want to, because I'm getting in an area here that's that's starting to, uh, to curve around there and starting to curve around here, I'm going to risk it, but I'm going to hold my fabric very, very flat and make sure it's kind of pulled out so that nothing gets strained. So now I'm going to come in here and do this part of the light color. Um, what I used to do with these nostrils was I used to ring the inside in black and then ring around the outside of this whitish area with white and I found it probably would work if we weren't using raw edge applique that does have a tendency to fray a little bit. Uh, it works better, I find now, what I'm doing is, is just going back and forth with the white thread. So basically doing the fur thing with that with it and doing it uh, in kind of like a donut. I'm using a slightly smaller stitch than I've used for the other, um, for the, the larger fur, and I'm also not going over the edges on this, especially not on the inside on the black. If you go over a little bit on the outside, it's maybe not such a big deal. darker brown color thread and I'm going to do the area in between the two nostrils and uh, finish up 
some of these other areas that we couldn't do before. Now when you look at pictures of giraffes, there's always a few hairs that are sticking out of their chin. And uh, so going beyond here with a few hairs would look very realistic, or at least it would in theory. Um, my experience of trying to do that is it doesn't really look as realistic as I think it's going to. So what I would recommend is just, just going to the edge, maybe go over it by a touch. But don't use this uh, machine quilting to go beyond there. If you want to add a few hairs at the bottom of the chin, do them um, by hand after the quilt is finished. Now I'm threaded with a black thread and I need to do the eyes. This is probably the one area that, that requires the most concentration. What I'm going to do is just go around each eye and then in this area uh, I'm, I'm going to just do one line of stitching that, uh, that separates the eyeball from the eyelash. So the best way to do that is to actually start with that line and I'm going to do a, a small lock stitch and go around there, cross on that line. And now I'm going to go around the complete outside of the eye and I'm going to be stitching with black thread on the black. So uh, this should help uh, keep the piece um, down and it should help deal with, with fraying. And it'll also, I think, look a little better. So now I'm going to do the same thing on, on the other eye, uh, and because, because the area where I'm going to go across is so small, I'm, uh, I don't want to start there because if I do my lock stitch in that spot, it might, uh, might cause the fraying. So I'm going to do my lock stitch down here, go up there. And then just do my across quietly and lock stitch at the end. If, uh, the main purpose of this stitching is not really to show up. It's not thread painting. Uh, its main purpose is just to make sure that that the um, that that the applique stays down. Uh, now I'm going to come over and do the, uh, the black bits inside the ears. And these are just, just like doing the fur and in particular you want to make sure you go over the edge on these ones.
now I'm going to come and finish the area of the ossicle. And um, if you remember, the male giraffe uses the ossicones for fighting. That's why the male giraffe's ossicones are smooth and they're much bigger than the females. Uh, so the tops of these ossicones are going to be nice and smooth. And similarly, this other bump in the middle of the head, which is, is uh, made of the same material and it's of a similar purpose. And in the photograph of the male giraffe, you'll notice that this, it's kind of black at the top and it, it sort of blends into the face. So what I'm going to do is kind of blend into the brown towards the base of it and then really make it blacker at the top with more stitching. And I'm going to smooth, I'm going to go back and forth and, and uh, around the contour of this to make it look very smooth. So once again, I'm starting at the base so that I'm always moving from an area of stitching to a uh, weight uh, towards an area with, with less stitching. So now we've completed uh, this, this horn in the middle and it's time to do the ossicones. And sim I'm going to do them exactly the same way as I did this piece, uh, only it's black on black so it's a little easier. And, and I can go straight on to it from here as long as I, I go uh, with, with the line of this one until I get to, uh, to the edge and now I'm going to change direction and go up here. things that I noticed when I was approaching this pin was that uh, the pin, um, the way the pin was holding the fabric was not exactly flat with the way the fabric was coming out here. Um, so the stitching is always right. So I took the pin out and readjusted the fabric so that it does all lie flat again. And uh, probably goes without saying, but this this horn is in front of the ossicones, so these sti this, these stitching lines cannot go uh, on top of that. And here I'm creating an area with no stitching that's trapped by two areas that are stitched. Um, the I'm, I'm going to allow it for, for this because this area in the middle is, is uh, sky, but I'm going to be very, very careful about making sure my fabric is good and flat when, I, when I'm stitching this area here. Now I'm going to come back and finish those areas of white that I didn't uh, finish before. Starting down with the second nostril. Remembering with the nostrils we're not going up and down, we're going uh, around the outside of, of the donut. Um, 
um, always uh, towards the center and, and away from the center and using a slightly smaller stitch here. Now I'm going to move over to the area just above the eyes and the ears. above the eyes in this area and I've gone heavily the normal way for my fur around the, out, the outside edge of the ear but in towards the center around the black area I've, I've left it a little bit lighter the stitching and now I'm going to go over that stitching with a slightly darker color and this is just to to try to transition a bit between the black and the lighter colored thread and, and to give a sense of the hollow of the ear. Now the last thing I need to do is just a very small touch. And and it's to put the glint in the eye. And I'm going to use white thread for this and a very, very tiny amount. And I, I want to go in a kind of a curve. It needs to go around the curvature. It needs to be only a few stitches. So I'm going to do it right about there. And I'm going to go just like that. And on the other eye, you're really only seeing a sliver of this eye, so you really just want a sliver of this stitching. Now the male giraffe quilting is finished, and we need to do the female. But I can't just jump over there and do the female giraffe. Because if I did that, um, I would end up uh, with an area probably with puckering in between. What I need to do is so is uh, quilt the area in between the two giraffes first, and then uh, then I'm going to quilt the female giraffe after that. Uh, when I said earlier that there was a reason for wanting my batting to have loft, this is why. What's going to happen is that I've got the uh, heavy quilting here, and I'll have heavy quilting on this giraffe. But in the sky, I want very light quilting. I'm going to have just wavy lines that, that look like the sky. And so what I want to happen is that the loft in my batting will make those lines, make the area in between those lines puff up. And that will cause the... the uh, the sky area to shrink just a little bit and it'll match the shrinkage that we've had in the giraffe. So in order for that to work properly I'm going to start here uh, I'm going to start at the area of the uh, the area that's already quilted and I'm going to lock stitch and do my uh, my sky which is just a back and forth wavy pattern. Now, if this was a, a show quilt, I would probably uh, end my line of stitching there and I would tie and bury the ends. But this is not a show quilt, uh, so what I'm going to do is just go a little bit 
right stitching in the ditch so you can't really see it along the area of that giraffe and then I'm going to come back again. Now I'm going to go back up and, and uh, start again in the middle and go back up that way. Now I'll just do this final bit. Um, and you can see that it does make quite a difference. That uh, If I didn't do this step, uh, uh, there would definitely be puckers. Uh, So now I'm, now I'm going to go back and do the female giraffe and I'll do her exactly the same as I did the male giraffe up until I get to this top part of her head. Now I'm going to do the white and the black stitching around this area. So I, I want to complete this ear and this bit of white before moving on to this other part. Now the thing about the female giraffe is she does have this bump on her head the same way the male does, but it's all uh, brown and it, it uh, blends right in. Well, I'm going to turn this around so it's right side up for me. And what I'm going to do is just draw this in. So I'm going to use my, uh, my brown thread painting to do something, see it's much smaller than, than the, the bump that the, uh, the, the male giraffe had. But generally speaking, other, other than that, I'm going to be going in the same kind of arrangement that I had before, and down the middle and off to the side like that, with the brown. So starting kind of in the center of this brown piece. Um, but because it's it's connected virtually from the top to the bottom, I can now quilt this entire brown piece. I don't have to do it in bits like I did with the male.
now the uh, this little bump is in there and it's just done with stitching and I'm going to come up here now and, and go do, do the ossicones of the female giraffe and making sure that I don't go beyond that line of stitching. And when I get to the top of the female giraffe's ossicones, remember her, uh, she doesn't fight with these and the hair that's growing on the top of them is still there. It hasn't been worn down. So I'm actually going to go up above here to show some hair growing in the top of the ossicones. Now you can see that this line of stitching where we've got the, the little bump on the top of the female giraffe's head, it's very subtle. You need to get very close in order to see it. But uh, that's pretty much the way it is in real life. And um, it's a little detail. If, if you don't feel comfortable doing that or, or, um, or you don't think it's important, you can just, just do the whole thing up and down if you like. Now I'm going to come over and finish off these last three little dots and that will be all of the brown for the, for the lady. So now I'm going to finish the, uh, the bits of white along here and, and around the nostrils and it's exactly the same as what we did for the nail. See how this pin is, there's just a little pucker there, so uh, it's another instance where the, the, uh, the way I lined up my fabric at the very beginning, it, it's close but it's not exactly the right. So now with the black thread, I'm going to continue the exact same way that I did with the uh, male giraffe. Now for the, uh, the little bit of uh, darker thread for the hollow of the ear. Now for the glint in the eye. And um, I, I know it's just a reflection of sunlight, but to me, uh, adding this bit is, is like breathing life into the, uh, into the animal. I'm going to go back and look at my male giraffe and make sure that when I put the glint in the eye and the female giraffe, I'm going to be on the same side of the eye because this is where the sun is. And uh, as long as it's meant to be a giraffe that's on earth, there's only one sun.
And there she is, the completed female giraffe. Now it's time to finish the sky. I've reloaded my blue thread into my machine and I'm going to continue in much the same way that, that I did uh, in the space in between the two giraffes. It's just going to be wavy lines. Um, occasionally what I like to do maybe one or two or three times across the whole quilt is I'll do a little um, pinwheel uh, pattern just if the spirit moves me I think sometimes that that just provides a little bit of interest. Uh, I always imagine that this wavy line pattern is kind of like a gentle breeze. In the area where I'm going to be quilting, I'm going to remove all the pins. Um, I, I want to make sure that the alignment of the top and the bottom layers is the natural way that it's flowing um, now that everything's been, uh, the, or that the center's been quilted. And I'm going to start part way up and move down. Um, and then I'm going to go continue around just just in an effort to try to sort of start from the middle and move up. The quilting is done and the quilt is almost finished. The next thing I'm going to do is spritz it with a little water. I don't really need to stretch it and block it the way you might do with some art quilts, but just spritzing it down, getting it a little damp, it, and then uh, spreading it out like this, it'll make it go nice and flat and, and that's really what you want for the finished quilt. The next thing I'll do is trim it. The finished dimensions are meant to be 22 inches by 29 inches, but of course if, if your quilt would look more balanced um, at a different dimension, that's okay. There, there's no, uh, it's just a nominal size. The next thing I'm going to do is add some facings. And I'm going to be using the pieces that I cut off the, uh, the front, the, the background blue piece of the, uh, the quilt when we originally uh, put it together. I'm going to need to piece this piece that goes along the side because it's not quite long enough. So I've cut three strips and the third strip will get cut in half and used to lengthen the strips on the two sides and then the remaining strips will go on the top and bottom. There are a lot of places on the internet on, on YouTube where you can get uh, quite good videos on how to do a facing if you've never done a facing before. Um, I like the look of the facing on a, on a finished art quilt. As you can see, it, it'll look just like this, so there's no frame around it. But if you prefer to bind it, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, the last thing is to do, do a hanging sleeve. And hanging sleeve, uh, there is no fabric with the kit for doing the hanging sleeve. You just need to use any fabric that you have lying around your studio. And um, there are, again, a lot of videos on YouTube on how to make a, a hanging sleeve for an art quilt. So the last thing then is to do your label and uh, celebrate that you finished this art quilt, the Giraffe Duo. So I'd like to thank you very much for joining me. And I hope to see you again when I make another video in the future. In the meantime, happy quilting. If you haven't already watched Turtle Encounters on our page, please check that one out. That's another Sue Sherman that touches on how she makes and gets the wrinkled effect into the, the neck and the arms of the turtle. I hope you enjoyed yourself here at Cottage Treasures with Sue Sherman, myself, and Delilah. 
please leave a like and subscribe down below and any comments are welcome. Uh, we try to get to those as fast as we can and we will be putting out tons more content this year. Uh, being that COVID-19 is slowly pushing it out of the way, uh, we're looking forward to having a fantastic quilt here with you.